Boy, oh boy, to be a Cowboys fan in 2024 keeps getting harder and harder. And tonight we'll discuss whatever happened on Monday Night Football versus the Texans. Here we go. What's up, Cowboys Nation? I am Odiso Rodriguez, streaming with you live every Sunday and Thursday night at 8 p.m. Central here on ADZ Sports Dallas Primetime. And catching up with you Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays with quick hitting videos such as this one. The Cowboys played a ball game last night, and these days, that means the Cowboys lost a ball game. The way that the season is going, fans are even questioning, will they ever win again? And the reality is, they had chances on Monday versus the Houston Texans. I think when you ask me what's the most uh, frustrating part of this game is that last week, we were talking on primetime about how close this one could be based on the fact that the Texans, they make a lot of mistakes. Honestly, they don't have that good of a running game, although versus the Cowboys, it looked pretty great, right with Joe Mixon running for 109 yards in only 20 attempts. I talked about the risk of this being an Atlanta Falcons pass rush situation where the Falcons got into week nine as one of the worst pass rushes in the NFL. The Cowboys made it look more than decent. A New Orleans Saints situation where the Saints looked like the most dominant team in the NFL early on in the year, only to find out that they actually sucked as a football team later on by them dropping, I think, around like seven consecutive games, something like that. And now this, right? Now the Texans running for under two yards per carry, Joe Mixon versus the Lions, and now go, going to 5.5 and having just no shot at all at stopping the Texans. It was one of those situations. Uh, however, there was a point in the game where the game was 20 to 10, and I thought, well, the Cowboys, they might just steal this one, right? Because they were moving the ball. It wasn't explosive. It wasn't pretty. There were a lot of mistakes. The Cowboys were moving the ball at times, and it felt like the team might have a chance. And I think they did a good job of just, at times, not necessarily always, but some of the best plays were little throws to see the lamp and then Cavante Turpin and that kind of stuff, and then the damage that these playmakers were able to do with the ball on their hands, right? That includes a 64-yard catch and grab, uh, catch and run touchdown from Cavante Turpin. It includes some plays where they intentionally targeted CeeDee Lamb underneath to give him space to work after the catch. There was a lot of that, but the moment where the game was lost, in my view, was when the Cowboys decided to go for it on fourth and two. Now, let me tell you something. I am not against, I am not against going for it on that spot. A lot of people will say, well, you're trusting the analytics, but you're not considering that you've got Cooper Rush at quarterback, right? I had that discussion on Twitter. A lot of people are like, how could you trust Cooper Rush on fourth down and two instead of just taking the three points? The reality is, though, you needed seven points at some point in this game. You needed a touchdown. So you tell me who is trusting Cooper Rush more. Is it the guy asking for him to get two yards on a play? Or is it those asking to mount a full series later in the game where you get back into the red zone, back into a touchdown position, and get it done, right? I would argue it is trusting Cooper Rush more, betting on him to put together a full-on drive that marches down the field to get six points. That's what I would argue. But anyways, I think that it was really a tipping point because you went from potentially being 20 to 17 to being 20 to 10, and then plays later, giving up the ball, Texans score, 27 to 10, the game is over, right? I think those two moments are really the ones that dictated the game because at that point, you're down three scores and there's just no hope in the Cowboys mounting a comeback with Cooper Rush at quarterback. Now, there's a lot to break down, but I do want to start with this. I, I think this team, man, I, it doesn't feel like they see eye to eye, right? Uh, Mike McCarthy, after the game, had a very interesting comment, which, which I don't understand if I'm being honest with you, but head coach Mike McCarthy Towards the middle of the press conference, he was like, one thing I wished I had done was play Trey Lance. And he specifically said 
that there was a package, not, not a package, excuse me. They said he, that he was ready to come in for one series towards the end of the game, and then the Cowboys didn't do it. And he said, that's on me. Uh, I take the blame for that one. Something like that, right? That was uh, Mike McCarthy's quote. But then you've got Jerry Jones kind of like saying, no, nah, we're playing Cooper Rush because he gives you the best uh, chance to win and all that. And I just think this, I don't think the coaching staff and the front office are on the same page regarding the quarterback position. I'm going to be honest with you. And I know I'm just speculating and I don't have any sort of inside info and I'm not reporting on anything. But listening to Mike McCarthy be like, yeah, I wish I had gotten Trey Lanz in for at least one drive. And then Jerry Jones being so blunt and direct about, hey, we want a Cooper Rush in there and not really being open to a quarterback position. I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't think they're on the same page. I would be surprised if the coaching staff doesn't want to play Trey. And that is not to say that Trey is absolutely going to be better than Cooper Rush. That is to say you're not going to win games with Cooper Rush at a quarterback. So if you're looking for a spark, maybe you try something with Trey's legs, with the dual threat, with the read option, that kind of stuff. Because then there's this. Jerry Jones, you listen to him post game, and he insisted that, hey, he said this like three times, Cooper Rush improved. Cooper Rush played better. Of course he played better. Last weekend, it was a 45-yard game for Cooper Rush. He looked incapable of reading the field, of making decisions downfield. Incapable of it. It was a better game from Cooper Rush. I don't think that's what we should be basing decisions at a quarterback, though, because the bar was so low. Right now, you look at Cooper Rush's numbers, they're a little bit deceiving. I'm looking at them right now. He did have 354 yards. He, he did have one touchdown, one pickoff. And, and you look at the interception, and to be fair to Cooper Rush, C.D. Lamb gets, you know, uh, he gets hit mid-route. So when Cooper Rush throws to the spot that CeeDee Lamb is supposed to be on, it seems like he just gifted it to Derek Stingley. But you look at the old 22, CeeDee Lamb should have been there. So I'm just going to give Cooper Rush a pass there. But again, going back to the numbers, he had 354 yards in 55 pass attempts. He still averaged 6.4 yards per attempt. And 64 of those yards happened on one play, and there were a lot of other plays, a lot of other yards that happened after the catch. So I don't think it was like anything special from Cooper Rush. Now, going back to the drive that we were talking about, had a fumble on the snap that was similar to last week's versus the Eagles, where you're like, he's looking on that direction, he's ready for the snap. It's not even that... Cooper Rush is adjusting the play at the line of scrimmage and then gets caught off guard with the snap. No, he's he, he's just not catching it. Later, he throws a pass over the middle of the field, should have been picked off, and should have been a pick six, if I'm being honest with you. It wasn't. A little bit of a break there. Go for it on fourth and down, and I already talked about this. I like the decision to go for it. I don't love the play call. I think sprint outs and I think moving the pocket can be a great answer when you have certain looks that you want to get and when you don't love your pass protection. But I think the problem is that the pass pro has been so inconsistent for Dallas that they've been tapping into these sort of answers since week one. You go back to week one, you're going to see a lot of sprint outs and you're going to see them throughout the entire year for the Cowboys. And they have not been working out for them for the most part. Those kind of plays have had negative results for Dallas. So I'm, I'm not in love with that play call. Now, Mike McCarthy defended it post-game. He said, we got the coverage we wanted. We, we got this. We got that. They wanted to throw it to the outside. It wasn't there. It was messy. So Jonathan Mingo was coming on the crosser from the backside. Cooper Rush tries to hit him, and he and Mingo are not on the same page, naturally. But, man, just, I, I, I wish the Cowboys would do something to shake things up. But I'm, I'm, it's starting to feel like this is the front office being like, nah, let's just chill with Cooper Rush and let's enjoy that. That's how I feel personally. Now, let me ask you something, though. 
Let me ask you something though. Are you, where are you at right now? Are you in tank mode or are you in, I'm hoping the Cowboys put Trey Lance in to see if this team can actually win some football games. Let me know in the comments because I want to know how Cowboys Nation is feeling and I'll be reading them later tonight. Uh, in the meantime though, let me talk to you about our friends over at Texas Card House where you can join the premier poker experience and enjoy this, the mix of luxury, sophistication, and camaraderie that they have over there for poker aficionados. Whether you are a seasoned pro or just starting out, you can get the thrill of the game plus the excitement of the right community. And if you play poker, you know how important it is to get the right community to play poker with. Shout out to them over at Texas Card House. And listen to this. If you go there at any of their six Texas locations, but at Las Colinas and Dallas, at these two particular venues, you go there, you mention A to Z Sports, you will get a free month of membership and two free hours to play poker. So make sure you go check out Texas Card House. Check out their website as well over at texascardhouse.com. You can use promo ADZ Sports, AZ Sports, and have a good one over there, man. You know I love playing poker. Uh, Texas Card House, they've got the perfect spot to do so. At this point, man, the Cowboys, though, there's a lot to talk about as well. And I, listen, I don't know that we're going to have time to get into it today. But let me say this too, man, because this is on my mind. The fake punt. Mike McCarthy admitted that they got outsmarted on that one. I don't even know if outcoached is a word. Mike McCarthy said they won the chess match. So what happened on that one is they, they didn't quite call a fake punt. They basically say, hey, you know what? We're going to punt, but if we get this look... Then we're going to throw the football. And what the Texans showed was they were going to go for the punt block. So John Mechie is at the line of scrimmage, seemingly going for the block, but then drops back into coverage, and he's there to make the tackle, right? So I'm assuming how basically it works is the Cowboys line up, and somebody maybe runs the check, maybe says something, or maybe it's Brian Anger just looking at it. And he throws the ball to Juan J. Thomas, but Mechi is there to make the tackle. Mike McCarthy was asked about it post-game, and he was like, well, it's a check. If it's there, we, we take it. If it's not there, we don't. Uh, but we got out coached because they, they, they baited us, is what Mike McCarthy said. And I don't know, man. It, it just seems like this full team, it feels like it's checked out at times. Like, what are we doing? Two fake punts in a three-week span? Are we hoping for that to work? I don't know, man. I, I just think it's crazy. And I think John Mechie kind of drops back into coverage early enough for there to be an adjustment. Uh, but maybe I'm being too too harsh on the players. I think this is a, this is a coaching problem before anything else. Jake Ferguson, by the way, hard pressed to play Sunday at Washington because of a concussion according to Mike McCarthy, as I record this. So there you go, some news. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I know we're frustrated with the Cowboys, though I wish they got on the same page regarding the quarterback situation. I wonder if this is the week where we see Trey Lance. If we don't, kind of, I think it kind of feeds into the theory that this is a front office decision more than a coaching staff decision right now. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, hit the like button for me. Thanks so much. For tuning into the show and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.